एवरीवन वेलकम टू दिस स्पेशल कवरेज ऑफ लोकसभा 2024 इलेक्शन रिजल्ट एंड द एसोसिएटेड वोलेटिलिटी व्हाट वी ऑल शुड बी डूइंग इन द मार्केट राइट नाउ दिस वीडियो विल टॉक अबाउट सम वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट्स दैट यू नीड टू नो बिफोर यू टेक एनी डिसीजंस ऑफ बाय और सेल फॉर द रिजल्ट डे व्हिच इज 4th ऑफ जून exactly one week away from the time i'm shooting this video in the second part of the video i'll include a practical objective model which is based out of excel and i'll provide a download link also which will help you take an objective decision not a subjective one which is typically based upon our political ideology or the party or leader we are supporting typically this is a nifty chart for last two days is it bothering you up down up down down if you are a trader this is very high volatility if you are an investor 23000 22900 just a 100 point range literally nothing material in two days so if you are feeling jittery you are probably trying to make quick money out of the market if you are staying out of the market you don't even know what is happening right now and if you found this overwhelming let's look at the next picture the previous picture was a approximately this zone we started 3 months back from about 22000 levels went up continuously nearly 1000 points fell in a hurry another 1000 point fall went up another 1000 points came down 1000 points went up more than 1000 points this time nifty found stiff resistance twice at 22800 levels it finally broke the resistance zone somewhere last week the bears have also attempted to break 21800 three times already but the bulls have been really strong at this level so if market fall then this is a strong resistance level that you have to watch out for but also note that these elections are not the last set of elections there are big state elections coming up as well haryana and maharashtra in november of this year jharkhand in jan of next year Delhi in Feb, Bihar a big state in terms of seats in November of next year. In 2026 we have Assam, Kerala, Tamil Nadu and Puducherry. These elections also decide the composition of Rajya Sabha to a large extent. So for the ruling party it becomes important that they or their coalition partners win these elections so that they have majority presence in Rajya Sabha also. Once the 4th of June elections are done, a new government will be formed in about a week's time. A new PM and a new FM will be chosen. it may be the same pm and fm which are running the country right now one thing unique which will happen this time is the fm will inherit enormous amount of money and opportunities to raise money this is a big deal for the country because fm can immediately push lot of money in the economy it could have a temporary uplifting effect or it could initiate a bull run that will run for a decade maybe the opportunity is huge let me take you through these five six points rbi has given 2 lakh 10000 crore rupees to the government as an extraordinary payout a dividend or the money they have left from the previous year this money cannot be spent by the old government at all the new government starting around mid of june will have this money available for budgeting the expenditure of the remaining of this financial year with immediate effect this is big money close to half percent of the gdp a significant tax collected in q4 of last financial year towards the end has actually not been spent it was to be spent in q1 but q1 essentially was a political quarter government was in election overdrive as well as there were restrictions from the election commission so a lot of money is unspent from the previous quarter's collections also most of the tax receipts for this quarter except the normal bau burn like salaries and planned expenditure that will be spent the gst collections have been increasing every month every quarter so a lot of money will be on that table at end of this quarter for the new government remember that end of june the quarter april may june will also end all this money will be available to spend in three quarters not four quarters most of the psu dividends given this quarter for previous financial year are lying with the government unspent also psus could be asked to give a large dividend if the government needs more money at any time the government does not have to wait for the results of q1 of this year which will come in july or august so a significant money is available via the dividend route for the government for example lic just yesterday announced a dividend worth more than 3000 crore rupees to be given to the government if government wants they can go in an overdrive to borrow money they can raise a lot of money via bonds government via rbi's policy change has already said that bonds of 10000 rupees are okay investors don't have to shell out 1 lakh rupees to buy one unit this will be a big facilitator in raising money from retail via the bond route for the government government could also use tools like currency printing 
Since demand lows, we have already tripled the currency in circulation. We could also expand the balance sheet, which means we will budget a larger deficit. We'll say that we are putting in money to grow the economy. That's okay as long as it is clear that the money will go into the growth of GDP and will be recovered eventually in the next few years. Hurried divestments. Government already has earmarked a lot of companies they want to sell their stakes in. Few days only there was an article which talked about government's wish to disinvest into a lot of ports that government owns, fully or partially. I do expect significant tax changes also when the next full budget is announced. One is fuel could come under GST that will give government a significant control on the fuel prices across the country and the collections will first come to the government and then go to the states. The state governments will sell, but for the center, it is a big win. Now the GST may not be 18%, it could be 28%, 40%, anything. Also, there could be some surcharges, temporary or permanent, on the salaried classes. Some GST slab changes might also occur. For example, 18% slab may become 20%. These could be lowered also. I'm not suggesting that the tax changes will happen for bad only. So when you take an investment decision or a trading decision, know that the next government will have lot of money and possibilities of raising money in their hands. What they will do, I don't know. But a good finance minister could put the economy in the next trajectory and speed up our journey towards $7 trillion economy, maybe leading to a GDP growth target revision, just like Goldman Sachs did a couple of days back. We could be heading towards 7.5-8% GDP growth easily with this kind of money. Some general inputs for next five days, don't leverage, don't spend the May salary which you would get on 1st of June. Think like a chess player, what the other person is going to do. You are fighting large bots, large investors with thousands of crores of rupees. They may cause spikes in the market, that too large ones, which can break the backs of retail. People like you and me don't stand a chance. The next step is something that I have learned the very hard way. Whenever you are banking on an event and testing a theory which could go wrong possibly, don't put more than 5% of your portfolio in those trades. Also, if you have existing positions in stocks, then don't short 100% of the quantity. Markets could go up significantly. You don't want to lose that earning potential also. For example, if you have 100 Reliance stocks, sell at most 20, 30, maybe 50, not more than that. If you want to sell the remaining also, maybe wait for a leg up. That too, if you are left with 50, maybe sell 25, 25. The ratio is what you want to decide, but don't sell everything in one go. When you take a trade, you should first know what will be your exit criteria. Some specific tips for long-term investors, buy and then sell. Don't short the market. And especially, like I said earlier, don't short 100% of the quantity. If you are sitting on positions where profits are very high, maybe 100%, 200%, maybe reduce those positions by 25%. Here I'm assuming you want to keep those stocks for the long run. This 25% reduction will book profits and if the markets tank, then you can buy those 25% again at a lower cost. So besides risk management, you can also earn a little money out of this. If you are holding a high dividend stock at a very low price, for example, if you bought REC or PFC at 120, 130 levels, don't sell them at all for shorting. You won't get a lot of high dividend yield stocks again at those levels maybe for a decade. So don't take that risk at all. Preserve your high dividend stocks. Buy more if you want to. But in that case also, don't sell them again because you will lose the low cost ones, which is not a great idea. Don't diversify too much, especially avoid tips. If you have a stock portfolio of 10 stocks, track those 10 only because you know the movement of those stocks. Don't experiment with new stocks whose movements you are not familiar with. Medium term investors, if the profits are higher, then maybe reduce 50%. I'm saying 50% here because you are a medium term investor, not a long term investor. I didn't mention specifically keeping stop losses because stop losses in today's volatility do not mean anything. They will get triggered two or three times in a day. If you are a swing trader, don't take positions with unlimited losses. Always hedge your position. Usually I don't recommend buying options without hedging. But if you need to then buy options while keeping in mind that decay will eat a lot of profit. But don't sell naked options right now. There could be spikes like these or maybe like these. These will trigger your stop losses if you have, don't have enough margin. If you just go to have water or maybe a tea, you might tend to see the same levels. How are your positions gone? with a huge loss book. Don't keep very tight stop loss because markets are fluctuating a lot in percentages, same with stocks. So stop losses will get triggered very easily. Not a great idea. In any case, large stop losses don't make any sense. Finally, if you have a very strong conviction, then back it with courage. If you're watching my daily updates, you will know 
that I've shorted the market in the last few days. I've stood by large losses, but eventually I've made some money. So don't lose courage when suddenly the losses become very high. Maybe don't average down also too much. Risk only the capital that you are okay to lose. Beyond that, don't short too much. Don't fight the market. Also specifically, I didn't write it, but don't go for revenge trades. If you have lost money in some trade, don't try to go for a reverse trade to take revenge. Take a new trade, totally new one. 